One of the strongest arguments in support of the existence of a past but now deliberately obscured, ancient, advanced, now lost civilization are the impossibly enormous, erosion-resistant megaliths, many far over a thousand tons in weight, seemingly effortlessly placed atop one another, as if the task was a simple one, tasks that appear to have required minimal effort to have once accomplished. Yet any explanation as to how these stones were moved, or any logical explanation as to how they achieve such task, remains elusive. Not only are there enormous, as yet unexplained megaliths all over ancient antiquity, the almost impossibly precise decoration and seemingly laser-cut accuracy found upon many of these ruins baffle all who gaze upon them, or have the unthankful task of attempting to explain them. Nearly every aspect of these masterfully decorated stones, many clearly of a tremendous age, are indicative of an advanced, now lost, stone-cutting technology. The reality that these decorated temples, tombs, and pyramids are found littering the countless inexplicable ruins found all over the world are nearly always accompanied by megalithic blocks, somehow quarried and once brought to each side and seemingly, no matter the size, lifted aloft, forming incredible trilithons, or blocks placed into walls perfectly placed with stunning precision. Another reason why stone ruins are such a great area for debate, and ultimately, a field which presents so many proofs for an advanced antediluvian civilization, one who were once capable of achieving such feats, is the unexplainable nature of these puzzling, inexplicably large blocks. Unexplainable according to mainstream academic opinion, and are predictably still widely overlooked. Regardless of this, our own research has exposed countless of these blocks. The pregnant woman in Baalbek, for example, once argued as being left where it now lay due to the incline, and its tremendous, once argued impossible size, is now however understood to have been found to have been part of a wall, with blocks now excavated, discovered to have been of an even larger size. Without question, Many undeniable proofs, in direct contradiction of the currently defended mainstream theory which pertains to this being our first and only ever societal development after simply appearing after an ice age, this being our only ever technologically advanced civilization ever to have existed. And although again, as previously mentioned, our ancestors within known permitted history often re-inhabited these builds they often left an archaeological footprint. Not only allowing those in the so-called know a stooge to pin the construction on, allowing the site to simply be brushed under the proverbial rug, but then to simply overlook any logical explanation as to how they were utilized by said capable claimed culprits. This secrecy deprives us of what we all deserve as equally sentient beings to provide us with the truth. During our own investigative research, in an effort to identify just how many times civilization had possibly experienced cataclysm here on Earth, a question which arose during our studies surrounding Italy's incredible ancient stone walls, when during said research, we thankfully stumbled across a very special part of this surviving relic. We found one of the ancient walls had two stages of ancient stonework in its makeup. One known as Cyclopean masonry, a substantial amount is now known regarding Cyclopean masonry, and has virtually been replicated in the modern era. However, the other style is known as polygonal masonry, a style we know nothing of. How they built these walls, or even how they created the randomly shaped blocks. It is a mystifying style of stoneworking, and yet another piece of undeniable proof of lost knowledge and thus of a lost civilization. If one watches our video regarding Basda, not only is there enormous amounts of undeniable photographic evidence of advanced ancient tool marks, like a fingerprint cast in stone for millennia, these tool marks eventually enabling us to link the cave with countless ancient ruins the world over. Ultimately, we believe we have not only proven beyond doubt that these technologically advanced and once highly capable civilizations did exist, not only existed, but are still being blatantly denied and overlooked by funded individuals. 
Yet it is not only the feat of being able to cut the stones, but create structures from them of gargantuan sizes, all once perfectly refined with such delicacy, masterful cutting ability and finish, and to say such tasks were achieved with mere copper or similar metals, is a lie so preposterous that even those providing explanation must know it's a lie, and this willingness to do so for funding we find highly compelling.
ley lines. A curious, rather quaint subculture found deep within old-school archaeologist fields. Like that of the crop circle, they are looked upon with an air of cynicism. The ley line is another intriguing theory that once one begins to dig into, finds the work of passionate, revered, and highly capable individuals, individuals who pursued the subject with hunger, one begins to see a rather compelling and convincing side to the field of study, which the deeper one digs into, the more convinced one can become. The Earth Mysteries Movement Much of modern culture is aware of the rebellious nature during the 60s. People rebelled in many ways, and the music became legendary. However, what many people may not be aware of is that there is also a rebellion within academic archaeology. John Mitchell was one particular individual who played a major role in promoting a belief in ley lines. His respect as status risked, as we have discussed many times, for if one even in the most established of positions can find their career disintegrate around them simply for not supporting currently funded paradigm. Yet regardless, John helped to professionalize the discipline. His acceptance, but more importantly, his valiant public exposure of his opinion, made the subject a movement, no longer a cynical pseudo-vocation. The transcendence of theory to reality for ley lines meant that it was no longer an amateur-dominated field of research. As one would imagine, the so-called ley lines, upon exploration, began to suggest that not only were they indeed real, but an ancient, advanced, lost, or possibly hidden civilization, not only built along them, but that evidence began to mount that, by doing so, energy fields not yet fully understood in the modern world were somehow being harvested or utilized by these ancient structures. Inevitably, this deepening of controversial conclusions made by many capable archaeologists they inevitably began to be battled against by mainstream institutions. It was in the latter decade that advocates of energy fields and their significance within an extremely ancient culture who somehow knew of these complex grid systems was ultimately the rub, as with the pyramids. It is the advanced nature of ancient ruins, later realized, which sentences said site to dismissal, conspiracy, and ignorance by funded institutions. Thus, anyone who had researched and subsequently become convinced of ley lines began to be labeled as members of the counterculture, where, in the words of the archaeologist Matthew Johnson, quote, they were attributed with sacred significance or mystical power. Ruggles noted, In this period, ley lines came to be conceived as lines of power, the paths of some form of spiritual force or energy, accessible to our ancient ancestors, but now lost to narrow-minded 20th century scientific thought." End quote. It seems like the many other relics of an antiquity, which displayed extraordinary abilities and knowledge, must be brushed under the rug regardless of the fact that anyone with even the smallest faculty of logic within their cranium can clearly see that there is a mountain of not only compelling evidence to suggest their existence, but that there is an equally large amount of information due to restriction in many forms yet to be understood. Ley lines have been subsequently characterized as a form of pseudoscience. Within the Skeptic's Dictionary, Robert Todd Carroll noted, that none of the claims about magnetic forces underpinning putative ley lines have been scientifically verified. Williamson and Bellamy characterized ley lines as, quote, one of the biggest red herrings in the history of popular thought. One criticism of Watkins' theory stated that given the high density of historic and prehistoric sites in Britain and other parts of Europe, finding straight lines that connect sites is trivial and ascribable to coincidence. Johnson stated that, quote, ley lines do not exist. He cited Williamson and Bellamy's work in demonstrating this, noting that their research showed how the density of archaeological sites in the British landscape is so great that a line drawn through virtually anywhere will clip a number of sites. In 2004, John Bruno Hare wrote, quote, Watkins never attributed any supernatural significance to lays. He believed that they were simply pathways that had been used for trade or ceremonial purposes, very ancient in origin, possibly dating back to the Neolithic, certainly pre-Roman. 
His obsession with Lays was a natural outgrowth of his interest in landscape photography and love of the British countryside. He was an intensely rational person with an active intellect, and I think he would be a bit disappointed with some of the fringe aspects of ley lines today." End quote. As one can see, there are many passionate dismissals of the existence of ley lines. And as our regular viewers will know, whenever we see such passionate denials, such encouragements to not even touch upon said research of a subject, a subject one can quickly prove to be possibly real, well, we find such highly compelling.